Hello there, it's Caroline here from Useful Graphic Design Tutorials again. And this is part two of video showing you how to create your own Paisley design, your own Paisley pattern. And just so that you remember, this is actually what we're um, aiming to end up with. Okay, let's get rid of that for the moment. So, at the last video, video one, we had imported our, our PNG Paisley images and we'd converted them into a vector so we could change the colour of them. So now what we're going to do, there we go, is to just create a background. And as quite a lot of people ask us about this on Facebook, then what I'm going to do is create an image which fits nicely on the Facebook wall. And that's going to be 404 pixels by 404 pixels. So let's create that rectangle now by going over to Create Rectangle and Square. Click on the icon there in the toolbox. And then the action is to simply drag out the shape holding your finger down on the left hand mouse button. Just like that. Make sure that you select the image itself. And we're going to put the exact measurements up here in the width and the height box. So let's just highlight that and pop in 404 pixels. You can tab onto the next one, or you can pop in 404 pixels. And here's the default of the sizing. You can change it to millimeters, centimeters, whatever you tend to work in. Now that's the sizing. Now, just to uh, tip you off about something, you can reduce the size of this, or indeed increase the size of it, by just grabbing hold of the handle here and pulling. And you will see that the the actual size of that rectangle now has increased. So if you save that and you put it onto Facebook wall and you wanted to show something in particular, then Facebook may cut part of that design off. So you're far better to create the image exactly um, as to the pixel size for the wall. So if we go Control Z, that will take us back to 404 by 404. Move this over here a little bit. Right. Now I've chosen a particular colour for my rectangle, but you can simply scroll through the colour palette at the bottom here and put in anything that you want. But I'm going to go up to this tool here, Edit Objects and Colours, and I'm going to put in this section here. Mine defaults to the wheel, but it just depends on, again, what you're used to. You could be used to HSL or RGB, but I, I prefer the wheel because it's it's visually I find it much easier to work with. And I'm going to highlight that section there and pop in 6, the hex number this is, 616A8B. OK. Now, that is quite a pale colour, and the reason for that is that the opacity has been reduced to 69%. One of the great things about Inkscape is that it remembers the last settings on certain things that you use. And obviously the last time I used this, I had reduced the opacity. So I'm going to move that up there and um, make it 100%. So we can close that now. I'm going to also place a very subtle texture, if you like, on that. And I do suggest that you, you don't make it too obvious, because that's then going to fight with the Paisley patterns themselves. So to do that, select the image, go up to filters, and there's all sorts of wonderful things to play around in, in here. But I, oops, I'm going to go to image effects, film grain, and that's it. You can see it's quite subtle. If you don't like that and you want to try another one, you can either go Control Z, which is an undo action, or let's go up to filters, image effects, film grain. You can simply go to filters and remove filters. You know, if you decide you didn't like the overall effect and you'd actually created several steps on, that would be the best way to change the filter. So, image effects, film grain. Okay, now all we're going to do is basically put the shapes onto the background. So you need to select them. Let's take this one here. Great, now this is great because we've created the shapes before the background, so that's the order in which they're lying. And all we need to do to bring that to lie on top of the background is to select that shape and go up to the raise the selection to the top. There we go, there we have it. Okay, now it's the wrong colour. I'm going to use, I think it was this one here. Yes, E9DDAF. 
and I'm going to duplicate that. Don't copy it, duplicate it. So that's Control D. Or if you select it and then right click, you can use duplicate. And let's take this small flower here, same thing, and change the colour. So I'm going to show you three ways now to change the alignment of this. And the first one is to increase the size of it. So select the image you want to increase the size. Grab hold of one of these handles here. And with Control and Shift on your keyboard held down, just drag out the shape. And the reason for holding down Control and Shift is that it will keep that image in proportion. I'll show you what I mean by that in a moment. So let's duplicate that again because I'm now going to show you how to reduce the size. Again, grab hold of one of the corner handles. Now, um, control shift. Let me show you what happens if you don't do that. You can just start to change this, which is fine, but you want it to... Well, you, actually, that you might like that, but let's go control Z. If you want it to be exactly in proportion, hold down control and shift, and then there you go, drag it to the size you want. You can then duplicate it. And these are great for sort of filling in those little spaces in between. Let's bring one of these in, in here as well. Change the colour. So we've reduced it, we've increased it. Let's take a look at this. Let's say we want to flip it horizontally. We can do that by selecting the, the, the um, shape and going up here to select um, flip hor uh, vertically or horizontally or rotating 90 degrees or rotating counterclockwise 90 degrees. So there's plenty of things you can do there. Or the easiest thing possibly to do is to select the shape, then click again. It's not a double click action, it's two separate clicks. And then just grab hold of this corner here and start to rotate it on that cross hairs there, as you can see. So let's do a few more of these. I'm not going to obviously do it all because you'll have your own shapes and designs that you want to use. Okay. You would simply place the images how you want to. You can do them in a pattern, or in a row, or you can do them fairly haphazardly, in fact, like I've done here. Well, in fact, let's look at this as a different colour altogether. Let's ungroup those. And you can see here that the colour I've used there is FFEE a A. But you'll no doubt, you know, have your own ideas about what you actually want to do there. So the last thing I'm going to show you is how to save all of this. And I suggest you do it in two steps. The first um, save, if you like, that I suggest is to actually save it as Inkscape SVG. And what that will mean is that you'll be able to come back at any time and make any amendments to the colour, the shape, whatever you want to do. So what we'll need to do is to simply go up to File, Save As, name the file, uh, the, name the file however you want, Paisley Master 2, let's put it that way. You'll see the save type as SVG, leave that as it is, and then click on Save. So you've now saved that master in the place that you want it to, so you can open it up and go back at any time and change, make changes. But the other way is that you may want to just save it as a, a PNG. The reason I say that is that that Facebook don't accept SVG formats um, there, but they do PNG and JPEG. So group them all, everything together, and that's simply by dragging your mouse and lassoing or rubber banding around the design. Go up to File, click on Export Bitmap. This dialog box appears. You just simply want to click on Browse as to where you want to save it. Let's Paisley Tutorial, that seems like a good place. So testing Paisley. You want to save it as a PNG type, and actually that's the only option you've got in Windows. If you're on a Mac, you'll have a lot more options. However, I don't save it as a Cairo PNG, just simply save it as a PNG for the moment. So click Save. Now this last part is crucial. If you don't click export, then you won't actually save this design. So click export, and now that's saved. Let's just go back in and show you where that is. There we 
go. There it is. And that's really all there is to it. That's really quite a quick way with us providing the Paisley shapes on how to create this uh, quite simple but quite easy to do Paisley pattern. What I'm going to do in the third part of this is to upload brushes into GIMP and that will show you how to actually just create these shapes and there's a lot more that you can use. You may want to, if you you know, if you're more interested in in sort of developing um, th that side of uh, the graphics, then you may be more interested in that. So watch out for that because that'll be coming quite soon. But I hope you've enjoyed this. And there's loads and loads of things that you can you can do once you get going um, with these sorts of designs. So thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you next time.